Hey everyone, uh, Pastor Jamie here. So sorry I can't be with you today. I'm really uh, missing you all and ask you to pray for me. I'm speaking at a number of churches on the island of Sicily today. So please pray for me as I am praying and thinking about you. But I could not miss this very special moment in the life of our church. And that is I get to introduce this week's speaker. When I first met this young woman, straight away, when the first time I met her, I realized God had incredible plans in store for her life. As I watched her develop through our youth ministry and grow up into the amazing leader and woman she is today, I can see again this incredible sense of purpose and destiny that God has placed on her life. Being there when her husband proposed to her, being there at her wedding, being there at the birth of her first child has been a great, one of the greatest privileges in myself and Ludmila's lives. And I just think it's so cool today as we celebrate Mother's Day. This isn't just about Mother's Day. It's about the fact that people who have an extraordinary purpose and call in their lives are given space to step into and walk in that calling. And so it's with the greatest sense of joy and privilege and jubilation, I get to introduce Rebecca Moldovan as this week's speaker. Come on, church. Let's rise to our feet. Come on, everyone up your feet. And let's give her a massive warm welcome. We love you, Rebecca. And we can't wait to hear what God is going to say through you today. And today, in part three, we are looking at this pushback. I don't have a great story to witness. I don't have a great story. Maybe that's you. You feel like, I don't have a great story to witness. And so before I move on, I want to welcome everyone watching us online. Can we put our hands together for everyone joining us? Today, in part three of our series, Witness, we are looking at the pushback. I cannot witness because I don't have a great story. And for some of you, you think your story is not great because there hasn't been really a massive change. You know, in your eyes, in your perspective, you think I've always been in church and I've always done good things. Not perfect, but I've always been around and, you know, I had an encounter with God. God, I invited Jesus into my life, but really I've always been around. And that's my story today. I can speak from that place. I've always, I grew up in church and... And sometimes I can feel like my story is not really great, though. And, f and, and that's only when you compare to other people's stories who maybe had a messy past. And they maybe did drugs. And maybe there was addiction to alcohol and things that, you know, in our eyes might be not such great things. And so we're comparing that. But, oh, but they had that story. And then Jesus came along and he completely transformed. And now they have this story that's there's adventure and there's change. And what a great story. My story just have always been here. Maybe that's how you feel today. You know, and, and I want to ask you who really defines what a great story is. Is in my opinion what a great story is? Like, who is the person? Why do we have this idea in our minds that... Um, our story might not be that great. I shouldn't share it. Is it the things I've been through or is it my perspective and my opinions and my, um, you know, my priorities in life? I look at your life and think, oh, that's not a great story, you know? Who is it? Let me tell you two stories and you tell me which one is the greatest. So here's someone who did not grow up in church, lived a very difficult life growing up as a child, experienced, you know, saw a parent being abused and grew up in that kind of environment. And then they grow up, uh, don't have a lot. They move countries to another place, completely different. And, and all of a sudden they have, you know, a better life, better lifestyle. And they meet friends and they try certain things in life. Um, having that trauma, you know, they're living with this trauma. And so they try certain things. They sneak into nightclubs, you know. They're not old enough, but they get in there. Like, they're, they're trying all the things. And one day they, they come to church. And they're like, hearing this message that God loves me, this is crazy. Um, you know, how could God love me? And they decide to accept this message. You know, this Jesus you're talking about, I want that Jesus in my life. And so this person is completely changed. They have a radical change. They're like, I'm going to leave all that stuff behind me, and I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to, you know, try my best to do good things and the best things I can and to be generous and help people. So that's their story. And here's someone else who, let's say like myself, who grew up in church and never had anything against church, had a good time, you know, all the time. And there was a point in my life where I was in church and God, you know, spoke to me. I could, I could hear in my heart, I knew that God was saying, is this something you want for yourself or is this just your parents' faith? 
And so they decide to follow Jesus with all their hearts and to persevere and to prioritize their faith. And so God does great things through them as well. You know, there's a change there. And so which one really is the greatest story? You know, how do you compare completely different stories? Your story is completely different to the person next to you. How could we ever compare? And the thing with comparison is that it can destroy our confidence. It can and it will destroy your confidence in sharing and being a witness. The moment you start comparing, you will destroy your confidence. It was never what God meant for us, comparing our stories. And so it's really important to know that comparison is not a good way to go. Don't do it. It will destroy confidence. Every person has a story. Every person is different. And every story is important. Every single story is important. My story, your story. And so that's what's important for us to know, even as we begin this message, is we're not here to compare or to say, this is the perfect example of what your life should be like. It's not that. You have a story, and God can do amazing things through you and through that story. You can impact someone's life. You might not be the next famous person who gets to impact thousands of people, but you can impact someone's life. You might not be a Mother Teresa or Billy Graham, but guess what? You have the power to impact someone's life with your story. And what we're going to look at today is the story of three different women in the book of Acts that we're looking at who had ordinary lives, but they were also extraordinary in their own ways, just like you are, all of us are. And so these women, you know, they, they lived out their lives, and we're not going to look at their whole story, but we're going to pick parts of, the, of their story that you know, that we can look at in our time together. We would be here for ages if we looked at the whole story. But, you know, we're going to be looking at ways that we can maybe be inspired by their story. And the first person we're going to look at is Tabitha. And Tabitha, as we're going to see, she had a great reputation. We're going to read in Acts 9. But the important thing to know about Tabitha is that she was building a foundation for when the gospel was shared, you know. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about Tabitha. She lived in Tel Aviv, and it's a narrow drive from Jerusalem. Jerusalem uh, was where the, the early church was, and so she's around um, the apostle Peter, who was a, a key leader in the church. He was going to you know, visit the people from the church around the area. There was peace. If you read back in Acts early, Acts 9, you're going to see that there was peace in the church at that time. So he was, you know, freely going about and checking the church members. And, and so we find that uh, Tabitha was in Joppa, which is in Tel Aviv, which is close to Jerusalem. So he's around this area where Tabitha lived. And so we're going to read this together. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. And in Greek, her name was Dorcas. And, and why they put this here is because the Bible, uh, the book of Acts, sorry, the book of Acts was written in Greek. And actually, Tabitha is in Aramaic, which is a language that they spoke in that area. So, um, so here's a disciple. So we know that she followed Jesus already. And she was always doing good and helping the poor. So 2,000 years later, we're talking about Tabitha. And her reputation is for always doing good and helping the poor. Oh, my gosh. Like, it's such, like, it might seem simple. But when you, when you read more into Tabitha's story, she was so generous. She was so, we do, we're not told how much she had. We're not told that she had lots, and that's why she was, you know, that's, that's what enabled her to help the poor. But we're told that she helped the poor, and that built her reputation. Tabitha was generous. And actually, I've, I've had someone like this in my life. Um, there's an auntie of mine, and uh, she's back in Brazil. And, and she, she is wealthy. And I didn't have um, a great lifestyle growing up. It was difficult for us. I lost my mom at an early age, and my father had to raise us all by himself and, you know, always trying to make ends meet. And so I had this auntie, her name is Francelina, and she, she with her wealth, she was able to help many of us in the family. But um, she had this reputation, like Tabitha, of being generous. She used what she had to help many people. Um, but I, I'll never forget this one time when it was my birthday. And we know birthday, especially when you're a child, you want a party and you want mess around and and we didn't have a lot and so there was no cake you know it was an afternoon I'm at home and there was no cake at that you know on that day probably couldn't afford it don't remember but she shows up with this massive cake with food and drinks and party decorations I'll never forget this and I just remember thinking wow like I am overwhelmed that you would do this you know a simple birthday party for a child but she showed up with all of that, and I remember saying to her, thank you so much, I, I really appreciate this. 
And her response was, don't worry about it. It's okay. And it was so humble and so, so inspiring, you know. And I will always remember her as being generous. And that's her reputation. But, you know, Tabitha was generous. That's what she'll always be remembered for. And so, just like Tabitha was generous, it's important to know that one of the most generous people that I know are mothers. And mothers, we're celebrating you today. And so happy Mother's Day to you guys. But, you know, you give so much of your time. You give so much of your energy. You give so much of who you are to raising kids who will do good and be good. And so you are inspiring as well with your generosity. But, you know, Tabitha, she built this reputation. And because she created this foundation of doing good and helping the poor with whatever it is that she had. Maybe she wasn't wealthy like my auntie, uh, but she used what she had to help the poor. And so because of that, because she was known by her good works and helping the poor, many came to know Jesus because she was known by many. Isn't that so cool? The gospel and the message of Jesus was spread even further and faster because she had already built this foundation. And it's not to put pressure on anyone to say, you have to build this foundation, but it helped the message to go even further. You know, and we can really do this today in our own lives. You know, is, is what you're living the same as what you're speaking? Maybe you say you have faith, but there are some things that are not aligning. And maybe today we need to think about aligning some things so that when the message is preached and when you say to someone, actually, yeah, I do go to church and uh, I have faith, it'll just make sense, you know? It's not going to be like, but, like, why? It'll just make sense. They'll say, wow, maybe this is real for you because I can see by your actions that this is your, you're living out this, this faith. This is not just something you attend on Sunday at and so we can do this also. We can help the gospel. You may not have the greatest story. You may not have the greatest story, but you can have a generous story. How cool is that? We can be generous. With little, with much, we can be generous. And so that's, that's Tabitha's reputation. That's her story. And much, much more happens. You can go on and read it, but this is what we're looking at today, that you can have a generous story. This was Tabitha's story. Your generosity can be the way that God uses you to witness you can do that, you know, you can be someone who's used by God with your generosity. And so that's how the story. We're going to look next. Our second, the second one we're looking at today is Lydia. And that's a very common name. My sister's second name is Lydia. And so maybe you've heard that name around, but Lydia was around a long, long time ago. And we're going to read in Acts 16 about Lydia's story. Um, you know, but to give you a little bit of context, the Apostle Paul, as we spoke about last week, and you can always go back and listen to that, but the Apostle Paul was traveling, he was spreading the good news, he had an encounter with Jesus, so now he's on fire, and he's like, I need to tell everyone about this, I need to tell everyone about this Jesus, and so he's going around, and he's in Turkey at this point, and one night he has a dream that someone is calling out for his name, they're saying, Paul, you need to come help us, you need to come over, and in his dream, this person was in Greece, and so he's like, okay, I'm in Turkey. There's people who need to hear the gospel in Greece. So he, get, you know, when he, when he wakes up from his sleep and he had this vision, he says to his group of people that were with him, we need to go to Greece. People need to hear the gospel. And so they go all the way from Turkey to Greece, and, and this is where we meet Lydia. So he's now in Philippi in Greece, and uh, we see that... Um, Lydia is also there. And so we're going to read from chap uh, chapter 16, verse 13. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gates to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. And the reason why they expected to find a place of prayer outside the city and not within the city walls is because there weren't enough meeting places inside. The there was not, not enough synagogues to meet. And so they had to leave the city because if they tried to pray inside the city... And they were now recognized groups of people, you know, groups of religious groups. Um, they, they were not allowed. The authorities were not going to allow it. And so they had to leave the city altogether, go by the river, and, and find a place of prayer. And so they would gather in groups and just pray together. And so they find themselves a place of prayer by the river. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Tyrtira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. And so we see that Lydia is actually from Tyatira, which is not Philippi, where they're meeting. So she's from Turkey. She comes over to Greece because she had a small business. And so she's now selling purple cloth, which at the very time was very valuable because purple was the color of royalty. 
And so she's selling this purple fabric, you know, and, and she knows this is very valuable and expensive. And so she comes all the way from Turkey because Philippi was a place of selling and buying. There was a lot of commerce. And, and so Lydia finds herself in Philippi coming all the way from Thyatira. She's dealing purple cloth. And here we find she was a worshiper of God. So she believed in the God of Israel. And the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. She was a believer in God, but she hadn't heard about Jesus. You can believe in God, but not follow Jesus. And so she's here, worship of God, open her heart to Paul's message. He's sharing about Jesus, and she believes. She opens her heart to it. When Lydia and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us home, to her home. And baptism here, just like today, is a, it's a symbolic way of expressing your faith. When people got baptized back in the day, they were like really serious about their faith. She was expressing, this is, this is who I am now. I'm a follower of Jesus. And so she got baptized, the members of her household as well, and she invited them to their home. Now, think of this, right? She's a businesswoman. She's got business, probably employees. Um, you would think that having a group of people who she barely knows come into her home would disturb her and it would be a burden but she's like no no you need to come you need to come to my house if you consider me a believe in the lord she said come and stay at my house and she pursued it she basically begs them please come stay at my house um and she didn't see it as a burden you know she did not see it as a burden and what's amazing to note is that paul had just arrived like i said in greece early ministry nothing had been done there yet and now Lydia gets to be a part of supporting this early ministry. We don't know if Paul had any connections there or if he had any help at all. And so now Lydia is there and she is the support. She's like, you're going to stay in my house. I'm going to make sure you guys are fed. And now instead of worrying about where they're going to stay, how we're going to do this, she is supporting them to start off this ministry, this gospel. And they can start to spread the gospel. And they have somewhere to be. They have somewhere to stay. And, and it's just amazing because Lydia... The reason why she ended up here is because she prioritized her faith. The reason why she was in the meeting, the, the, at the meeting place for prayer, like we read earlier on, is because she prioritized her faith. She could have been home. She couldn't, you know, she didn't need to leave the city. She could have prayed at home in her comfort place, but she prioritized her faith. And she said, you know, I need to be together with believers. I'm going to go find a group of people who want to pray and who want to seek God. She knew the life was better connected. Isn't that amazing? She knew, you know, thousands of years ago that, you know, I, to strengthen my faith, I need to not only believe in God, but I need to meet with people who do the same. And it's so important. Your faith is strengthened when you prioritize and also prioritize meeting, being here. You're doing that right now. So you're in the right place. And she did that. And, and by beginning with that, she started with that, and she was so blessed because she got to hear about Jesus, and she got to follow Jesus, and her life was completely changed. And so not only was she blessed by that, but she also was a blessing. Like I said, she was blessed, and she was a blessing. How cool. I love that because when we prioritize God, blessings come with that, and we're able to bless other people as a result. It just, it just happened. It wasn't forced. She just said, I, I need, to, I need to, to invite you guys to my home. And so, you know, when, when we prioritize God and put ourselves in the right place, amazing things happen. And I have a story about that because um, that's how I met my now husband. Because I remember prioritizing, you know, church and youth. I, was, I would always be a youth every Friday night. It was the place to be. Unless I was, like, dying, I would not miss a youth event. You know, we would meet with all the young people, and it would be there. I, I used to tell everyone in my school about it. And, and so I kept showing up. I wasn't looking for someone, but uh, maybe I was. <laughs> but I was living my life, and I kept showing up to youth. I was involved in making it happen. It was so cool. And, and one day, Julian, my husband, shows up. Somebody invited him. He shows up. And he heard the message of Jesus, and he was able to, you know, have an experience with God and say, if, if God loves me, I, I want this, you know. And so he did that. And time passed. Um, he told me he liked me. So uh, that was nice. Uh, he told me he liked me. A little while later, I told him I liked him back. So I friend-zoned him, and then I told him I liked him. So the Lord changed my heart. But, you know, years later... Um, a year later, actually, we, we got together. We started dating. 
And he proposed to me in church. You can see how much we're in church because he even proposed to me in church. Um, but, you know, it was always a priority. And so, um, and so many blessings have come with that because I, here I am just being faithful to God, you know, being at the right place. And God brought someone amazing to my life who had values and, you know, believed in God and honored God. And so, I don't know about you, but maybe you're single and, you know, you're looking for someone. I'm just saying, if you stick around long enough, you might find someone. <laughs> you might find someone. Not everyone's perfect, but, um, you know, if you keep showing up. And so she was blessed. And, you know, Lydia was at the right place at the right time. She was praying by the river that day when Paul showed up. After having this vision, you know, it was really far away. And he ends up in the same place where he meets Lydia, and she gets to be a part of this amazing story. She was at the right place at the right time. But here's the question. How did, how did she know she was at the right place? At the right, like, how did she know that day Paul would show up? How could she have possibly known he was coming from Turkey and it's another country? But, you know, she just kept showing up. She didn't show up that day expecting amazing things to happen in Mipa. She just did it out of obedience. And she was, she was showing there to pray. Her heart was for God. And in that obedience, in that, in that perseverance, God blessed her. And so she was, she was so blessed. She received salvation through this experience. She came to know God. She was the very first convert in Paul's ministry in Europe. She was the very per first person to decide to follow Jesus out of this ministry, out of this work they were doing there. She hosted the first home church. Like I said, she was a support there. She was the place where they could meet and gather and, and talk about Jesus and share. She supported Paul and his companions in the early ministry. They probably had nowhere to go. They'll probably find somewhere to stay. But now that's all sorted because Lydia was so hospitable and she opened her home. And look at us talking about her 2,000 years later. She prioritized and she positioned herself in a place to be a blessing, you know. She was the right place at the right time. And just like Lydia, we don't know what that looks like. Like, how do you know? You just keep showing up. Keep positioning yourself in a place where your faith is first. Keep positioning yourself in a place where there's other believers. Like here, if you're a Christian here today, if you're a Christ follower, and that's what you believe in, keep, keep being there. Keep being here. Because at some point, God, God's got a purpose. And maybe, you know, maybe you even came to Ireland looking for opportunity. Maybe you're not even from here, like myself, I'm from Brazil, um, and you're here looking for opportunity. You know, that's how my father actually came to Ireland in 2009. He came over because, like I said, life was really difficult in Brazil, and so he said, I cannot let my daughters grow up in this situation. So he left, and he came to Europe to look for opportunity, and maybe you're looking for opportunity here and success, like my dad was, but what if God has a bigger purpose? What if you're looking for opportunity and for a good life and to get out there? And God's like, you're looking for a better lifestyle for your daughters, but I'm going to use you and your family to bring my message forward. How cool is that? Is it an opportunity for you? Maybe it's a job. Maybe, maybe you've gotten a new job recently and you're like, you know, I'm going for that promotion. That's what I'm here for. I need some extra money to pay the bills. But God is like, what if I've put you there to be a blessing, to be generous? To create that foundation. So when, you're sh you know, when your faith is shared, it makes sense. What if God has a bigger purpose for you? Are you prioritizing God? If you're Christ follower here today, are you really prioritizing God? Are you making the effort? Even today by being here, you're prioritizing God. And are you positioning yourself in the right place? Just keep, just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. And I believe that God will do incredible things. Lydia prioritized people and God. She prioritized God first. She showed up, and then she prioritized people. And so that's, that's, her, that's her story. The third person we're going to look at today is Priscilla, and she's the last woman we're going to look at today, and she, her story is found in Acts 18. And just to give you, again, a little bit of context of what's happening, because it's easy to pick up a verse and just read it, but once we understand what's happening, it's a little easier to picture what was happening at the time. So Paul, who we spoke about, had an experience with Jesus. He had a very messy life. He persecuted Christians, but now God transformed his heart, and he's preaching the good news. <laughs> Imagine that. And so Paul is traveling, and he's spreading the gospel. 
He goes to Thessalonica. He goes to Berea. But every, everywhere he goes, he's so passionate that some people believe, which is amazing, but others want to kill him. He's so passionate that, you know, some people don't understand, and they're like, we need to, we need to put an end to this guy. He's not, he's not doing good for, for us here. And so he keeps on going from Thessalonica to Berea, and he ends up in Athens where he gets an opportunity to share the gospel with the high council there. So a lot of people heard about Jesus they were like, what is this story about a man who died and came back to life? We need to know. And he's able to share. And some believed, some didn't. But this is where we pick up the story. So in verse 1, it says, After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. So here we see we see where he's coming from, came from Athens. He got to share his faith there. A lot of people listened. So he went on to Corinth, which is also in Greece. And he, there he met a couple, Priscilla and Aquila. And the reason why they were um, in Corinth is because they were in Rome, but they were deported. They were sent away like all the other Jews. They had to leave Rome because of their, their faith. And so now they're in this new place, Priscilla, and they meet Paul in this place in Corinth. Different stories coming from different places, but they meet there. And Paul went to see this couple. And because he was a tent maker, like they were, he stayed with them and worked with them. And so we see here that they were basically kicked out of their homes, you know, Priscilla and Aquila, because the emperor was like, the Jews need to go. And so we see here that they got together. And the fact that he stayed with them and worked with them, we, we know that Paul would have been sharing about his faith and about Jesus the whole time. And so this couple would have heard a lot about the gospel and learned how to share the gospel as well by being around Paul. And between verse 3 and 18, where we're going to go next, um, we see that they spend about a year and a half together. And here's what happens in verse 18. Paul stayed in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. So now he goes on to spread the gospel in Syria, and Priscilla and her husband decide to go with him. They're uprooting again to leave their home and go support the ministry. They just got into their new home in Corinth. But you see, they, this time, they chose to leave. The first time they left their home, they, they were deported, they were sent away, they were refugees because of their faith. And now they're, they're leaving their home again for their faith, to share their faith. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off can't read because of a vow he had taken. In 19, they arrived at Ephesus where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila and then he himself went into the synagogue to reason with the Jews. So now they made their way and they stop at Ephesus. And Paul, and Paul leaves Priscilla and her husband there. And the, the reason why it's important to know that they stopped at Ephesus is because years later, Timothy would come along and have a mega church there shared the gospel, build a church, and there was a massive church in Ephesus. And we really believe that Priscilla and Aquila planted a lot of seeds years and years before. And so they stopped at Ephesus, and Paul entrusts them with the early ministry in Ephesus, where years later God would have done amazing things. And so this trust that Paul had in Priscilla and Aquila, to begin up, their stories, their story is of people leaving an unbelieving place because of their beliefs. Priscilla left this place that was very unbelieving because of her faith. There were believers in an unbelieving place in Rome. And so, you know, she persevered. The story I want to share with you about Priscilla is that she persevered. She could have given up her faith very easily, saying, look, we're leaving Rome. It's gotten too difficult. I'm just going to put this thing aside and live my, my life because it's just too tough. But no, she persevered. She persevered, and God did some great things in the ministry in Ephesus because she persevered. And, you know, I have a story of my own where I had to persevere. I was in school, and it was really hard. Like I said to you at the beginning, you know, sometimes you can feel rejected because of your faith. It's not always the easiest thing. And I remember being in third year in secondary school and really struggling to share my faith and how to live it out. And I remember saying a prayer one day. I said, God, I just prayed to God. I said, please send some Christians here because I'm really struggling to be a Christian in this unbelieving place where everyone judges and mocks me for my faith. Something that is the very core of who I am. 
now I'm going to, you know, be mocked about it. And so I prayed and I said, God, just help me, please send some Christians. I know it will help me to spread the word. And I had to persevere, you know, I didn't give up. I said, God, please give me the strength. Please give, you know, the, what I need to keep going. And it's interesting because I just kept doing my thing. Like I said, you keep showing up. I kept showing up at youth. I kept showing up at church. I kept serving with all my heart. And a year later, I, I, I was sitting down where, you know, we sat down with a group where my year was uh, kind of gathering and stuff at lunchtime. And I sat down and I looked around to my group of friends. And I realized, I know it was God reminding me of that prayer. And I realized that all those people around me had either become Christians because of my influence or they had been to church at some point and they were exposed to faith. And so your perseverance is so important. It's so, so important. I don't know what that looks like for Maybe it's work. Maybe at work, you know, if you share your faith and if you just, you know, people are going to mock me. They're not going to understand. They're going to disrespect. But don't give up your faith. People's lives are on the line because their faith might be a response from you sharing your faith, you know. And so don't give up. We learned from Priscilla that she persevered. She left her home. She went into a new place in Corinth. And then she decided to go again for, for the sake of her faith and moved to Ephesus. She persevered. She kept doing And God used her and her husband. She may have given up her home, but she never gave up her faith. Isn't that so amazing that she gave up her home once because she had to, because of her faith. And the next time she said, you know what, I'll move again. But this time I'm doing it because I want people to know about Jesus. She never gave it up. I'm sure it was tough. Can you imagine being deported because of your faith and getting to a new place and all the difficulties that come with that and a job? She never gave up her faith. And the encouragement here is that when we persevere, our faith is strengthened. I, my faith was so strengthened when God reminded me in that moment that my prayer had been answered just by my perseverance. I didn't give up. And God reminded me, you know, you just... You just kept honoring me. You kept showing up. You kept being generous in your words and in your time. And you know what? Now you've impacted people. Your, uh, my prayer was answered by God's work through me. And so when we persevere, our faith is strengthened. Don't give up. If you forget any, everything else, don't give up. If you're a Christian here today, God will bring you through it. I know it if you just persevere. And so this is what we learned from Priscilla's story. How amazing. Three different women we're going about their lives like you are. And today we get to be inspired by them. And my conclusion for you today as we come to, towards the end of today is, will you provide like Tabitha? I'm not sure how much you have. It's not about how much you have, really. We don't know how much she had, but she provided for those who needed. Maybe it's with your time. Maybe it's making time to help others. In your busy life, we all have busy lives, but maybe it's in your time. Maybe it's actually even being here. Did you know, did you know that people were here early this morning because they were providing their time to set all of this up? Because they were ready for you. They were providing their time. Maybe it's a talent you have and you haven't been sharing it with others or you know, even using it to bring glory to God. And if you're Christ follower, you can, you know, you can do that. If you're not a cross follower, you can also do that. But in the context of church, like, come along and do this. If you have a talent, let's use it. Whoever you are in the room today, let's, let's do what Tabitha did. You know, she was, she was generous. And second thing is, will you prioritize? Like Lydia, prioritize your faith. Keep showing up. I know that God will use you in incredible ways if we just prioritize like Lydia. And not only prioritize, place yourself in the right place. That is such a, a massive part of this is you can prioritize your faith, but continually place yourself in the wrong places. And it's really hard for, for God to work with that. He still loves you and cares for you so much. But when we keep prioritizing, putting God first, your time with, with God, prioritize your faith with believers, with being in this place, you know, God can do amazing things. And lastly, will you persevere like Priscilla? There was a lot that went on. But she did not give up her faith. 
She did not, pers- she did not, she did not give up her faith, and her perseverance strengthened her faith. And so, if you're here today and we began talking about a story, and here are three really cool stories, and your story is very different like mine. We're all, we've got different stories, but I want to encourage you that if you came here today and you're someone like me, who has always been in church and just being faithful, if that's you in the room today, I'm speaking to you very specifically, I want to tell you that you have a great story. It's so important to know that because a lot of times we put ourselves down, oh, you know, there is no contrast or before and after. But, you know, your faithfulness is worth sharing. A lot of people don't make it and they don't, don't stay faithful because it's hard. But you went through that and you stayed faithful. And if you're a Christ follower here today and you've always just been there, keep being there. People need that inspiration in their lives. People need to know that some people make it and they don't give up. You have a great story. You should be confident. You have a great story. There have been struggles and difficult moments. But you persevered. You persevered all this time. It's so important that you know your story is inspiring. It's powerful. And it is worth sharing. It's so worth sharing. And I've spoken to those who have always been faithful and have always kept their faith in first place, but maybe that's not you today. Maybe there have been things you did before that you're ashamed of or it's, it's hard to accept that God would use you when you've not always been here. But I want to tell you that God can redeem anyone. God can change anyone's life at any point. But are you willing? And for those of you we're here today, and maybe it's your first time and you've never heard any of this before. But I want to tell you that Jesus loves you. He loves you, and your story can also be inspiring and powerful. And your story is always worth sharing. But God can do something in your life that no other person can. He can give you hope. When you feel hopeless and peace, when everything is just a chaos, it's a different kind of peace. And so, if that's you, I want to encourage you that there's also a place for you here. Whoever you are, God can do an amazing thing in your life. And it's completely up to you. He will not force his way into your life. All he wants is for you to invite him in and see what he can do. And so know that God can use any of us to be a witness for the message. He can use any single one of us. Because it's really about him. He uses our story. But it's about his story that we're sharing. It's about the gospel that we're sharing. And so, yeah, I hope this message has really encouraged you and inspired you to keep going. Whatever stage of life you are, maybe you have never been here, just keep going. If you've been in some bad places, some difficult places, and your faith was tested, keep being here. And if you've always been here and you persevered through those temptations and difficult times and if you're the faithful one who's always been around, you think maybe your story is boring. It's not. You have a great story. You have a place here, and God can do amazing things. Amen? Hey, church, Pastor Jamie here, and I want to wish all the women at church today and those who couldn't make it or those watching online a very happy Mother's Day. I don't know about you, but I am grateful for all the women in my life, from sisters-in-law to mothers-in-law to me mammy, and of course, most importantly, to my wife. And of course, we told the scripture that women weren't an accident. They weren't put on, on earth just to be an accessory or to make the world more beautiful. Women were a gift from God. And it's our desire that all the women in our church, mothers, grandmothers, wives, business people, educators, teachers, health workers, entrepreneurs, whatever God has called you to be, that you would walk out your extraordinary purpose in Christ. We love you, we value you, and we celebrate you. Come on, let's all stand and give all the women, come on, a massive Buddha bus in our church. We love you guys. I want to pray a very special prayer over you. So as you're standing, let's pray. Father, I thank you for all the women in Lighthouse Church. We thank you for the blessing they are to our church community. 
community, the R to our lives, to our lives personally and corporately. I pray a very special pastoral blessing over every single one for your provision, for your protection, and for the power that we have been talking about in this series to be real in their lives. Thank you, God, that every single one of them has an extraordinary purpose in you. And I pray they wouldn't just know that extraordinary purpose, but they would live to walk it out. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Come on. Happy Mother's Day. We are so grateful that you could join us today. We really hope and pray that you were encouraged, that you feel blessed by this message. And you know what would really help us? If you could click the like button and also subscribe to our channel because we want to get this message across Ireland and the world and that would really, really help us. So please go and do that. Um, and also to let you know that you can watch and listen to previous messages and find out a whole bunch of stuff on our website, Lighthouse Church. And something else that's really cool, Jake. Tell us about something our Something else. Today. Yes, guys, we have a brand spanking new Lighthouse Church app. Yeah. So make sure to go download it on our website or you can download it via the app stores. And there's a lot of cool things in there. You can rewatch previous messages. And there's also some downloadable content for you guys. So make sure to download the Lighthouse Church app. And there's also the Old Fashioned Bible on it. Bible is so important. So, and you know what? Even better than this experience today that we've had is church in person. It's just so good. We meet every Sunday morning in Navin and in Dublin. You can find out all the information on our website, uh, but it's at 11 a.m. every Sunday in person, and we have the best time. So come join us. Uh, we would love to have you with us. So we'll see you next week for Lighthouse Church Online, 7 p.m. Yes. right here. And also, don't forget to follow our social media handles, lighthousechurch.ie. So we'll see you next week, guys. Bye.